Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Terrible? Oh, minta maaf. Oh, that's Indonesian. Uh, you need prayer. Okay, because I'll, I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm Don Butera. Um, I'm from my mother, and uh, she happened to be in the United States at the time in Rhode Island, and then, oh boy, maybe what, now 12 years ago, right, we moved uh, to Indonesia, felt the call of God to go to Indonesia, uh, and before I even say anything, I just want to thank you because pretty much from the very beginning, uh, you guys have been part of our, our ministry, you have supported us in prayer and, and in support and everything, I just want to I want to thank you. I want to wash all of your feet. So I have bowls up here. Um, no, it's been an amazing trip. Uh, this is my wife, Carol. Uh, if she can stand up and do the, the thing, do the thing. Yeah, she, she's actually a pretty amazing speaker, but she just says, nope, I'm not coming up there. Okay, so you just, <clears throat> anyways, whatever. It is good. I love her. We've been married for now 35 years. Uh, yeah. So, so, uh, oh boy, they never give me enough time. You know, you know what it means when a preacher looks at his watch, right? Absolutely nothing. Anyways, um, so yeah, we've been in Indonesia for 12 years now, and it's been an absolutely amazing journey. I want to just take like about five minutes and kind of tell you what's been going on, what's been happening. First of all, uh, our goal for this year is to plant 30 churches uh, throughout the islands, uh, our island. This is really loud. You might, what am I doing wrong? Pull it away. Yeah, yeah. You just, you know, you just get a bad guy here. I just don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I used to be in computers, too. you think I would know technology. Anyways, uh, so we, 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 our goal is 30 churches this year, 200 churches next year. We are, we, where we go is to in unreached people groups. So it's not like you can put a building up and then, you know, have a traditional style. So we do house churches. Uh, we do have a traditional style church in, in the city of Dempasar where we are. Uh, and they all say hi, even though they don't know I'm here. Oh, they know I'm in America. They don't know I'm here. Just shut up, Donald, and get on with it. Okay, so, uh, yeah, and uh, over the last, uh, you know, 12 years, it's been a joy to be there. We have seen God move in all kinds of ways. We've seen deaf ears open, blind eyes open, lame people walk. It's just, like, the most amazing thing. I, I, and we've seen, like, these guys who are, like, uh, demon-possessed. We've seen them get delivered. It was, uh, I'll just tell you a story. When we were in this one place called... Uh, Nongan, and Nongan is, uh, our island is pretty uh, spirit friendly, let's just say it that way. And uh, there's, the, you know, they, 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 uh, they dedicate their babies to demons basically at the, at the, at the beginning of their lives. It's kind of how it works. And, uh, so, and they don't even know it, you know, like they don't even know that that's where they're at. They're just very uh, open to letting spirits come into them. And so, you know, we went to Nongan. Nongan's a really a place of black magic. And uh, I don't know any other magic. It's always black. Uh, and so we were there. And it was like about 50 people. We got an opportunity to preach the gospel. And my friend is standing in the corner, you know, and he's just praying while we, while we worship. And then, and then uh, I preach the word. And then at the end, when I, we get ready to pray for people, um, he just says, Jesus Turun, which means Jesus fall. And uh, when, G when he said that, all of a sudden, we had people puking in buckets and, uh, you know, stiff and, yeah, all kinds of fun stuff going on. I had brought a guy. He was actually on a missions trip. He was from Arkansas. And so as soon as that happened, you know, like, I don't know about you, but I get really scared. Eh, wrong answer. You don't get scared. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Can I get an amen? amen. So, like... You know, there's a song that comes over, my, uh, over in my mind every time we begin to face these demons. It's a song. You probably know it. Uh, MC Hammer, Can't Touch This. Do, 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 do. Right? So, like, we go right in. My friends and I, we go right in there. We start praying for people. We start casting out demons because that's what you're supposed to do. Right? And I look up, and there's my friend in the corner. He's, like, standing in the corner. He's just staring at things. And I, I walked over to him. I said, what's the matter? He goes, I've never seen anything like this before. I said, well, you're not doing me any good. Get in there. Let's go. Stop praying. You know, and, and God does deliver people. Can I get an amen? amen? 
you know, we were in we were in this one place, and and I don't know why I'm telling these stories, but uh, you know, whatever. And so we were in this one place. We preached the gospel, and people came down for prayer. And you know, I'm just praying for people. And this one guy, he kind of falls out. And you know, I, I mean, I, I'm not that kind of guy, but that's what happened. And so, like, I move on to the next guy, and then I look over to my shoulder. And my friend's going, mm mm, not that way. And so all of a sudden, he had stiffened up and began to rage, like like. Because he was, yeah, he had visited a witch doctor the week ago, we, we found out. And uh, so, like, they're holding him down. You know, they're pinning him down. And by the way, the Indonesian Christians, they, I almost feel sorry for the demons. They run at them. Dalam nama Jesus. You know, they start saying, in the name of Jesus, get out of here. They start, you know, so I came over to the guy, and I just said, okay, Lord, what do you want to do? Because that's kind of the guy you want to follow, right? So, I said, Lord, what am I supposed to do? And, and they were holding him down, and he was, he was raging. And, uh, and, and I just heard the Lord say, just let him go. So I, I, I got down on my knees. I said, hey, let him go. And he sat up. And, like, you know, and, and then he's trying to hit me. And he's going. <laughs> and I said, okay, God, now what? He goes, give him a hug. So I gave him a hug. And I just, you know, I just hugged him, and I just it was praying for him. I said, you know, just get out of here, will you please? I didn't even say please, but, you know. Uh, and, and, the, and, and it just left. And then he's, he was upright. He was, he was okay. And, and this is what, this is kind of what we deal with over there a little bit. I don't mean to make you, you know, I mean, it doesn't happen all the time. But, yeah, this is kind of what we do. We have teams that do that. And since we've been there now, it's, we've seen hundreds of people come to Jesus. We've baptized hundreds of people of all faiths. It's, it's actually amazing. Uh, and, and we're in like, my, I always said that I want to be, uh, I want to I, I wanna get into five never been reached people groups, meaning they've never had a witness of the gospel. Now, one of the things that you're asking me to do, I just want to be clear so you understand. So like, let's just say that you're in a, let's say you're in a town, like in a house right now. Let's say you're in a house, and in that house, your family had grew up generation after generation. So like, you're like the, the, the 10th to 12th generation in that house. Right? And all your neighbors, same thing. You all grew up with 10 generations, you know, one after another. And, and all of you are Christian. All of you are Christian. You know each other really well and everything. And all of a sudden, you know, these, these four guys come walking down the street and, start, uh, and, and they start telling, telling your children about Allah. How would you feel? Not too good. You wouldn't really like, you wouldn't really like that. But that's what you're asking me to do. You're asking me to walk into these villages who have, have never heard the gospel, who have generation after generation have been following Allah, and now you want me to go in and witness to them. It's not that simple. It takes a long time. Sometimes it takes years to penetrate them. And, and, and I, I, I know I've said this here before, so I'll say it again, though. I, I, it's, good, it's good I repeat myself. God showed us a long time ago. He said, you know what, Donald? You're supposed to love those people. And if you love them for any other reason but to love them, you don't love them. So if you love them to save them, you don't love them. You're just a salesperson. Because that's what salespeople do. Salespeople become your friend. Why? Because they want to sell you something. They want to change you or move you or motivate you or whatever they want to do. But God doesn't do that. God dies while we are yet enemies. While we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. No agenda. For a chance that you will come to Jesus. For a chance that you will receive him. Not, not that like, so he didn't like become your friend and then try to flip you. So it takes time. We have this one village over there that it's, 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 it's north of us in Bangli. We've been like there for now like three years. And, and during the pandemic, you know, we helped thousands of people with care packages and, you know, just uh, ready to eat meals. Because there's no, there's no unemployment there. No money, no, no work, no money, no food. So, and we did medical clinics. My wife goes up there and helps them with English uh, Programs. We just keep loving on them. Keep loving on them. All of a sudden, the head of the village starts reading the Bible. Oh, isn't that interesting? Starts reading the Bible. It's amazing what the Bible will do. You got to trust that. Trust that someone who doesn't know anything about anything starts reading the Bible. The Holy Spirit's going to do something. You should try that sometime. Just give somebody a Bible and just say, read it. No questions asked. 
No, no, no lessons, nothing. Just see what happens. Watch. It's pretty amazing, actually. So finally, uh, about maybe, what, four months ago, uh, she came to one of our Indonesian uh, services. She comes to the service, and she goes to, you know, it's in, it's in Indonesian. They call it Bahasa. She, she was there. And at the end of the service, uh, she comes out. She walks up to me. She goes, I want to get baptized. I was like, cool, we'll set that up. She goes, no, no, I want to get baptized now. So I was like, go. Let's, so we ran off and found a pool and baptized us. She's the head of the village, so we have open doors in there. So God is open. And now, since then, we've seen 15 people get baptized, and God is moving in a place where there's never been a gospel. But it takes a long time, a lot of seed planting, a lot of loving, a lot of waiting for God to do what he does best, not for me to jump ahead of his agenda and try to save someone. My goal is not to save someone. My goal is to love someone, and they see Christ through me, and then they come to him. Amen. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And so we're really seeing that, you know, uh, I'll tell one more story. Oh, boy. I'll tell one more story, and then, I'll, then we'll get to the word. Uh, and, and, and so this one lady, I was, I was, uh, I was calling, the friend called me up and said, hey, this, uh, this Muslim woman wants to, uh, wants to talk to you about Jesus. I'm like, cool. So I jump on my, my motorcycle or moped, whatever you want to call it. I love those things. Uh, I love it. You can go anywhere, any way, up sidewalks, down. I love it. I love it. And I love no rules. I love no rules. So, uh, so you know, as I'm driving, I'm praying, uh, and, and I'm saying, God, what do you want? And I keep hearing baptism, baptism. So uh, we get there, I get there, and I got there before she did, and um, so I said to my friend, get two pairs of shorts and get two shirts. I think this, this, this lady wants to get baptized. So um, she talked to me for about 20 minutes. I said, I said, you want Jesus? I can see you want Jesus. Just, just pray. She goes, I don't know how to pray, because that's what will happen. These guys, sometimes they say they don't, they don't pray out loud, so they don't know how to pray. I said, you've been talking to me for 20 minutes? Just talk to God the same way. And she starts praying this most beautiful prayer. I mean, I didn't give her any lessons on what to say. And she's asking God to forgive her and cleanse her and come into her life. And, and all of a sudden, she starts speaking another language. And I'm like, is that Indonesian? No. Is that, like, is that uh, Javanese? No. Is that Balinese? No. I couldn't figure out what language. And then I realized she got baptized in the Holy Ghost right there. You know, she got, and she's like, she's bawling. And all of a sudden, she, like, after about 15 minutes, she opens her eyes. She goes, what was that? I was like, ah, don't worry, we'll tell you about that in a minute. And then she looks at me, she goes, can I get baptized? I'm like, that's what the shorts are for. And then, and then her husband comes to Jesus, and then they start bringing all their friends, and they come to Jesus, and then this Indian guy named Bharat, he comes to Jesus, and he leads his sister to Jesus, and, you know, it just keeps going and keeps going. and keep, You never know who you're leading to Jesus. Amen. But God wants you to be bu busy doing that. Can I get an amen? amen. All right, so... Yeah, you, you want to hear the word. So thank you so much. It's, it's a joy. It's a joy. So, uh, you know, yesterday, it happened yesterday and even uh, the, the, the past week ago, I, I have a, 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 very, a very good brother-in-law. I love my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law loves gardening. And he is so proud of his tomatoes. You know, he brings me, he goes, check my tomatoes out. I don't want to check them out. I want to eat them. You know, and so we've been eating uh, bacon, lettuce, tomato sandwiches. I mean, they are like the best. And, and so like even we were over there yesterday picking them. And, and yeah, so let's read. John, what? What's he talking about? I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, John chapter 15. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit. And he prunes every branch that, uh, that do bear fruit so that they will e produce even more. You have already been pruned and, 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 and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me and I remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot, you cannot, you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown into the fire, excuse me, is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered in a pile and burned. If you remain in me and I, my words remain in you, ask whatever you want and it will be granted to you. When you produce much fruit, uh, excuse me, when you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples and that brings glory 
to my Father. Now, who wants to bring glory to, fa to the Father? Can I get an amen? We want to bring glory to the Father. We want to produce fruit. And by, by the way, another version says, fruit that will last. Now, in this, uh, you might want to call it a parable, the story, there's four characters. There's the gardener, there's the vine, there's the branches, and there's the fruit. Okay, four. There's four. We're going to talk about all four, and, and, and I'm going to talk really fast. Uh, okay, so... The first one is the gardener, like my brother-in-law. He's the gardener. Now, what is the, what is the whole thinking of the gardener? What is he thinking? He's only thinking one thing. Produce fruit. That's all he wants. All he wants is fruit. He'll do anything to get fruit, but he wants fruit, and my, might say fruit that will last, at least in this case. So he's busy. We went there yesterday, and, and of course, right away, we're like, any tomatoes? He's like, yeah, I got tomatoes. Okay, so let's go out back. We go out back, and he says, you know, pick whatever you want. And as we're picking them, he's, I, I said, I said, I can't believe that these plants are producing so much. He goes, yeah. He goes, well, every day got to make sure I water it, make sure it does, gets enough sun, make sure it gets enough fertilizer. Every day I'm walking these things, right? Just like the Father in heaven his whole goal is to provide the garden with everything it needs to grow. Ah, wrong answer. He doesn't care about growth. He cares about fruit. That's what he wants. He wants fruit. He can have all the growth in the world. If there's no fruit, he is not happy. So the father's job is to provide everything to, for the garden to produce fruit. The Bible says that God has given us everything we need for life and godliness. Yeah. Some of you are sitting out there going, I've had too much sun. It's been, it's been too hot for me. Not just the weather. I'm not talking about the weather. We're talking about analogy here. You know, and, and like, you know, it's been tough for me. But God knows you need it. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. That should change your view of the situation that you're walking in. If you know that God is going to bring victory, which I believe he will, and I believe he does, then when evil comes your way, you can laugh. You can say, oh boy, victory's coming. It can change your whole perspective on what you're dealing with. Oh, whoa. And you turn if Can I get an amen? Amen. So, so the, that's what the garden is dealing with. Now, the vine, very simple. The vine is Jesus. We know that, right? And he said, because he said, I am the vine, right? And what is his job? His job is to give whatever the Father gives and give it to the branches. That's why you need to be connected to the vine. Without being connected to the vine, you can't get what the Father's going to give you. That's why he says, remain in me, be connected. So you need to get connected with Jesus. That's why he's so essential, because he has the nutrients that you need to grow. Ah, wrong answer. You need to be connected to the vine in order for you to what? Produce fruit. Oh, yeah. We're going to get to the branches in a minute. Let's talk about the fruit. Now, the Bible says fruit that will last. Fruit that will last. Okay, fruit that will last. What is the only thing on this earth that's going to last forever? We know the world won't, right? Bible's clear. He's going to... Gone with it. Bring in the new. Animals, psh, gone with it. Your house, psh, gone with it. Your job, psh, gone with it. Everything is going except for one thing. Souls. Souls is the fruit that will last. So God is calling us to produce fruit that will last. Now, oftentimes you hear the word fruit, you say, oh, yeah, God, God wants me to produce love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Yes, in order to produce fruit. 
Why do you have those characteristics? Why does God want you to have those self-control, have joy, have peace, have kindness, have patience? Why? So that you will show God to people so that you will produce fruit that will last. It's all about people. There is nothing else. You know, I know I've said this here. God is not going to come up to you and say, well done, good and faithful servant. You built a good house. Well done, good and faithful servant. You raised a good family. Well done, good and faithful servant. You did my will. And the will is that none should perish, but that all should come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So we need to deal with fruit and try to produce fruit that will last. Now, kind of decided this this morning that I was going to share this. Matthew chapter 13, beautiful verse. It says this. It says, uh, the kingdom of God. Now, this is the kingdom. So this is the kingdom of God. So that means the kingdom thinking, the way the kingdom works, the way the kingdom acts, which is the kingdom of God in you, should be same. Yeah? Am I okay? Vine, branch, whole bit. It says, the kingdom of God is like a man who went searching for treasure. And when he found the treasure... He sold everything he had, and he bought the field, right? We know this. If you don't know this, trust me, it's in there. Just look in the good book. Okay. So the guy goes. He finds the field. He finds the treasure, buys the field. God showed me this a little while back. He says, how much dirt did the guy buy compared to the treasure? Bought a whole lot of field, got the treasure. He didn't buy the treasure, he bought the field. I'm so glad. Whole lot of dirt. Whole lot of dirt. He sold everything because he saw a treasure. He saw a treasure. He said, I want that treasure. See, We've got to get our eyes off the dirt. We are so busy looking at the dirt in people when we got to find the treasure in people. And how do you think this guy found the treasure? How do you think he found it? He had to dig. He was probably digging in that field. So he was dirty and he was trying to find something. So he's going into the hearts of man and he's digging away. He doesn't care if it's dirt. He wants the treasure. We need to go after the treasure, not the dirt. I mean, it's so hard because I know sometimes, man, you see people and you're like, man, there's a lot of dirt in that, a lot of dirt there. I don't really want to touch that. I don't want to get dirty. I'm so glad, so glad. We, we, we had this couple, and they, they, they wanted to have a... They want to have a Bible study at their house. So we're like, of course, we say yes to that. So we go to his, their house and like all these New Agers there from all over the world. And uh, the couple, they were living together. And, uh, you know, there was probably most of them weren't even saved. I don't think any of them were saved, maybe one. So we start a Bible study. We go over to their house, we eat, you know. Never say anything, just go, just, just love on them, right? Just care for them. We're just loving on them. We, we, we had, months went by just sharing the word, just sharing the word. Sharing. So finally there was like these four guys that were, they used to come very regularly. None of them were saved. And, and, but we were getting close to like salvation time, you know. You could see it was on their, on their mind. So uh, they were sitting on the couch and I went down the row and I said, you know, hey, you want to get baptized? He's like, yeah, I want to get baptized. I'm ready. I'm ready to get baptized. Next guy, you want to get baptized? Yeah, I'm ready to get baptized. Third guy, you want to get baptized? Yeah, I want to get baptized. Come to the last guy, the guy who's living with the girl at the house. You want to get baptized? He said, nah. I said, why? He said, too lazy. Now, he's, been, he's my friend now. Like, you know, we've been hanging in this field for a long time. We're friends now. And so before I even realized what I said, I mean, he came out of my mouth faster than, that's usually what happens, that's the problem with me. You know, it comes out of my mouth too fast, right? So he said, yeah, I'm too, I'm too, I'm too, I'm too lazy. And I just said, well, I'm so glad that Jesus wasn't too lazy to come to earth and die for me. I'm so glad. 
and, 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 and so, like, I think I, think I kind of shamed him a little bit. And, uh, and, and, and so, like, about an hour later, he comes up and he goes, hey, Donald, I'll get bat- I want to get baptized. I, w- I want to come to Jesus, too. So that next week, all four of them got baptized in the pool. About two weeks later, you know, they, we're there, and the lady of the house says, you know what, we've been talking. We think we need to get married. I said, oh, good idea. That's a good idea. I like that idea. You want to get back? And she goes, yeah, but we want to get married in the, uh, we want to get married in our small group. And we want to invite all our friends. We want to do it right here because you guys are our friends. And so we did, in, the, in our small group, we did the marriage right there. And more and more people have come to Jesus. See, in, in, instead of me just like, you know, this, do this. Just love on them. You know, you, you can't hold people to standards that they are blind to. Stop looking at the dirt. Go by the field and let the breath of God hit that place with his treasure. And trust me, it'll be beautiful. It's time we get busy trying to produce fruit that will last. Now, I can't last forever, so I'm not going to even get to any of the points I plan to get to. But I think you get the idea. You got to stay connected. You know, uh, you know, God wants to prune you to help you get rid of the stuff that you're not doing so that you produce more fruit. That's what pruning does. But I want to talk about one more thing, and that is uh, it says remain in me. And a while back, uh, God kind of showed me something about how, what that means and how, how to do that. How to really remain, how to get connected, how to really get connected. So I just want to do a little kind of analogy. So does anybody here have a coin? Yes, I'm going to make a coin disappear. Does anybody have a coin? Yeah. Okay, he's got a coin right here. If you can get in your pocket. Yeah, those skinny jeans will do it to you every time. Oh, yeah. All right, well, 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 you got a coin, right? Yeah. All right, what, what do you got? Quarter. Is that a quarter? Looks like a, oh, it's a quarter. I thought it was a penny. Quarter, okay. So you have a quarter. I have $5. Yeah, I'll trade you. Oh, it's 20. I have a 20. I'll trade you. Oh, I thought I had a five, dear. Sorry. Sorry, it's a 20. He, before I even asked, he's ready to make that trade. Right? <laughs> you want to make that trade? Sure. Absolutely. Why? It's, it's way better, right? It's way better than the quarter. Okay, I'll make the trade. This is a trade. Okay. Are you sure? Oh, yeah, I'm absolutely sure. Okay, let me tell you why. Okay, the quarter represents your life on this earth. That represents what God gives us when we oh, give him our amen. lives. We amen. win every single time when we give our lives to Jesus. Can I get an amen? Amen. So the first thing we got to do is to get connected, you've got to say, God, I want to make that trade. My life for your life. My life for your life. You win every time. Eternal life. I mean, you got what? I mean, you know, you got 70 years, 80 years. I, I probably could say 70 years everywhere here. You got about 70 years left. That's why Jesus is coming back soon, whether you like it or not. Your life for what he gives you. But then let me show you something that God does that's absolutely beautiful. Now, I think usually you have the piano player come out at this time because we want to make this real spiritual. So we want to put the pads on the back, you know, so I can really lead up to it. Is it just me, or am I the only one that thinks these thoughts? <laughs> Anyways, so, but that is a hint. That is a hint. That is a hint. <laughs> All right, but let me show you what God does. This is the most, this is what. <laughs> I, I, you got to love this guy, right? You got to love this guy. He's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is what's most beautiful. Oh, now it sounds like we're spiritual. No, seriously. He takes your life, and he does something amazing. I I won't spit on this, but, you know, he he cleans it up. He forgives everything. 
He makes it beautiful. He makes your life beautiful all over again. Brand new. That's what he does. And then he does this. Then he says, here, you can have your life back. Now, will you serve me? See, God doesn't force anybody. He doesn't take your life and make you a slave. None of it. He gives you your life back in a beautiful way and then asks you, will you serve me? You know, like when, when we say, will you give your life to me? We already gave our lives to him. Now it's like, I want to give my time, my resources, the gifts that you gave me, God. I want to use them for you. That's what it's all about. And to me, when God gives us our life back, we don't deserve it. But we don't get it the same way. It's beautiful. It's brand new. And then he says, serve me. You don't have to. But if you want to stay connected, like when I say connected, I'm not talking about salvation. I'm talking about hearing his voice. Hearing his voice. I'm telling you, if you're busy producing fruit that will last, God's attention will be on you. He will help you. He'll prune you. He'll give you whatever you need to produce fruit that will last. And in the end, you'll have a garden of people. A garden of people who will last forever and ever and ever. And, and, and I'll, I'll say honestly, that's why Carol and I are so thankful to partner with you guys. You guys have been so gracious to us because you play a part in the fruit that we've produced. And, you know, I'm just so happy to see all these people, like when we have our gatherings, all these people that have come to Jesus. Uh, I, I'll do it. I, I know I've done this here before, but I'm going to do it anyways. You know, if you lead someone to Jesus and you meet them in heaven, they're not going to walk up to you and go like this. What's your name? Ricardo. Ricardo. Thank you so much for telling me about Jesus. This is a really amazing place. I'm really glad that I'm here. They're not going to say that. They're not. They're going to go, Ricardo, thank you so much. Don't you want someone coming up to you in heaven thanking you for introducing them to Jesus? Let's produce fruit that lasts. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we can do nothing without you. So Lord, if there, you know what, I, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a big guy like this. I don't do this kind of stuff too much. But if you want me to pray for you right now, just raise your hand. I want to pray for you. If you want to say, God, I want to give my life back to you again. I want to just serve you. And, and, and you know what? I haven't been lately, and I really want to do it. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. I want to pray for you right now as we close. Amen. 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 Lord, we are nothing without you. But Lord God, we want you. We want, we want to Feel your spirit flowing through us so we can reflect your love to all those around us. Lord, we can't, we can't save anybody. But Lord God, we can show them your love. We can show them your grace. We can show them your goodness. And Lord God, I know through that they will find you, Lord. Make us branches that produce fruit that will last. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.